Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I filled that glass, put some water in the glass, not to drink, but to talk about whether what I'm about to talk about is a glass half full, a glass half empty, or what I want to do on behalf of my organisation is fill the glass up. Uh, I know that some of you have been in the Elmwood Club uh, for reasons other than what the Elmwood Club's operating there. And we even had a smart, smart choice uh, consultation there, uh, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm here, but never mind. Um, I've got five watts here, um, which I'll go through hopefully very quickly, and uh, if you've got some questions, that's fine. So what is the Elmwood Club? It's an umbrella club that was established before the earthquakes, but I'd have to, of uh, now seven sporting clubs, all based at Elmwood Park. I have to say that it was catalyzed in its development by the earthquakes because all of a sudden, we in the area, apart from everybody else in Christchurch, found there was a very great lack of social space. So the bowling club pavilion all of a sudden became home to a whole lot of other organisations that needed somewhere to meet for funerals, 21st, weddings, you name it, we've had it. Um, so that's what we do. We've got seven sporting clubs involved, a mix of ages and sporting codes, um, summer and winter sports, and we're providing social and administrative services to those clubs. The handout of passed around, you'll find out there, there's more information in there, I won't go through who the clubs are and what they are, you can look at those at your leisure. So what have we been doing? Second what? Well, we've been concentrating on supplying services. Um, the Elmwood Bowling Club Pavilion is not fit for purpose, the insurance company have written it off, uh, so we've got a, it's safe, but not fit for purpose. <coughs> So what we've been doing is learning how to effectively manage the competing demands of a whole number of organisations, sporting and otherwise, some of which are complementary, some of which are competitive, and that building is now operating basically from 8 o'clock in the morning till 8 or 9 o'clock at night, most days of the week. We think we've got a handle on that. Uh, we've been developing relationships with local schools and other community groups and we've been exploring the use of other facilities. Those of you who have been there will know that uh, the number one green was munted and on the basis of waiting for them to settle down, we put 850 tonnes of sand on it and turned it into the urban beach, which is used by volleyball and all sorts of other organisations. Um, so that's what we've been doing. What have we just done? Well, that's probably the main reason I'm here. And that is that we have secured agreement with the Board of Trustees of Heaton Intermediate and the Minister of Education that we can take over the use of some of their green space um, to expand the facilities and replace our existing pavilion. And that will be a shared cooperative space between the school and the Elmwood Club and the community. So, if you'd like to go to the back, there's a schematic of what we might finish up with in the fullness of time. Wow. What does that schematic involve? Well, it involves replacing the existing Bowles Pavilion with a new fit for purpose building. It involves replacing the mounted number one green where the urban beach is at the present moment with an artificial green and hopefully in the fullness of time um, putting a roof over it so Christchurch would finally have an indoor first class bowling centre um, to go alongside the other bowling facilities in Christchurch so when Asia Pacific are here and the World Bowls and that sort of thing they've got a bailout position. Um, and it's ideally located for that because we're central, we're on bus routes, all those sorts of things. Uh, and we want to build a multi-purpose sports hall because we need uh, that for training facilities for our constituent clubs. We're in the situation where some of our clubs are based at Elmwood Park 
and play their sport there and practice there. There are others, like hockey, for example, they need an artificial, a genuine artificial turf. They use us, but they practice and play somewhere else. So in that sense, a multi-sport facility undercover has a lot of appeal to just about every club we're involved with. Um, the school had a problem this last winter where they couldn't use their sports ground for four months because of earthquake damage. That is going to have to be repaired one way or another. We put the suggestion to them that if um, perhaps they don't, we should be thinking about putting an artificial football turf in there, which is available for the school during the day, and in that sense other teams, other sports can use out of sports hours. All right, so that's uh, part of it. And the other thing we want to do is to continue to grow sustainably and organically. I have to say that in relation to sporting hubs, nobody has yet designed the ideal model. There are some that are more successful than others around the country. Um, we think we're doing pretty well. We think we can do better. Um, and we can, our intention is to uh, be here in another 100 years time. Uh, the bowling club has been there for about 100 years, so we just want to put another 100 years on it. So that gets to me to why I'm here, really, um, which is to put a stake in the ground, I suppose, on behalf of grassroots organisations, because that's what we are. Uh, this has come about because a group of clubs have got together and done it. We've had advice from other people, like Sports Canterbury and so on, but the reality is it's been generated from the local area to meet a genuine need, and we're aware of Westminster and we're aware of Rafferty and so on. So uh, I'm not quite sure whether they're going to appear. I haven't talked to them, but if, if they don't appear, I'm just putting a stake in the ground for them as well uh, in terms of saying, from, it seems to me from a council point of view, what we're looking for as we uh, read the year plan things and so on, is uh, a council and its staff which are sympathetic and enabling. Now why do I say that? I say that because where we are at the present moment, we're operating on what is now called Open Space 2, and we're also potentially operating on Cultural 3. And that seems to me that, and I also live in a SAM, and I know, I notice that the SAM designation is about to change and so on, and people are changing things around. And I just want to be assured that in that sense, all the new legislation that will be involved will be enabling rather than restricting, because um, I don't know where the Elmwood Club is going to evolve. Well, I know it's been evolving since I got involved with the idea 20 years ago. And it's a lot different now to what we talked about 20 years ago and it'll be a lot different probably in five years' time. And I'd hate to think that we didn't take the opportunity now to leave enough flexibility in the regulations to say, this can grow, because in my view, it can grow to a club which is going to have 2,000 plus members, even more. Mm. And there, there are three schools which are now using it and will probably use it more in the future. All right? So I think that's the important thing is um, just looking for your support in, in all sorts of ways. If you've got some money, that's fine, but that, <laughs> we'd rather have the, the support in terms of council and everything else at the present moment. Um, and I think to suggest that um, the need of grassroots organisations should be taken into account in terms of the big picture. that. Uh, we're not as important as the anchor projects and all the rest of it, right? But in reality, we might be do more exactly. for the city, the, the city than some of the anchor projects. Thank you, Matt. We're not allowed to say here, here, but we, <laughs> I think we do. Um, just to, so I've got the the direction right. That that's um, this is that, this is Elmwood Park on this side. No, no, no. This is looking. We drew this for the school. Right. right, so this is looking for the school towards Elmwood Park. So the building is on the school... Oh, so it's school on the back now, because at the moment the, the building runs down the side. No, the, the, the building, the, our original building is yep. 
when you're looking there, is on this that corner. This corner here. Yep. All right. Right. And now it's I've got running it. along. Yep. Up towards the St Andrews boundary. The trees behind all the trees yep. in the car park, and behind that is a tennis club, and behind that again. Right. I was uh, looking in, the wrong way. Yep. Park, right. Yep. Yep. Brilliant. All right. Brilliant. Excellent. I haven't got time. David. Well, I can give you a couple of Yanni, quick. Is the tennis club involved? The tennis club, um, I haven't been involved up till now. We went to them from the start and they said no, they would sit back and paddle their own canoe. However, we had a meeting with them last night, which I think will mean that they've been watching. They weren't convinced that we could pull it off, in my view. But they've the, now. But they've seen this. They've now, now realised that we are there for good. So uh, I would. I'm reasonably confident. You can never tell with sporting clubs, but uh, I'm reasonably confident that they have now got the, starting to get their heads around what we're doing and saying, well, okay. I mean, I think they realise that in terms of what we're doing now, it's a it's a once and for all decision as far as they're concerned. They're going to put it off up till now. Now they're going to have to think about whether they want to come in or stay out. And it, the sensible decision is to come in, but you know, I'm That's not in the tennis club. Great. All power to your arm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right.